We are going to start this craft off with decorative metal shower rings, paper clips, wooden beads, and pliers. Connect all of the shower rings. I have about 10 for this craft, but you can use more if you want a longer rain chain. Take a paper clip and center it on a ring. This will be for the longest piece that will be at the bottom. Bend the end of the paper clip out. Choose some beads, whatever you think will look best. I don't really like this bead, so I'm going to go with one small and one large red. Place the beads and grab your pliers. Start at the end of the clip and twist the metal to create a swirl. Take the large piece off and grab another paper clip. Center the paper clip and bend out the end. Cut the clip slightly. Take the inner portion of the clip and bend it down and inwards. Make sure the clip stays. If it looks like it will slip out, use the pliers to press the clip into place. Place one small bead and one large bead. Twist the end into a swirl starting out at the end and moving inwards. Repeat this for every ring minus the bottom one. Place the long clip that you made before and center it on the last ring. Get all of the shower rings lined up into the right position. This will make it a lot easier when you bring this rain chain outside. Hang up your rain chain. When it rains, your chain will look a little something like this. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye. First, lay out the plastic sheeting and fold it over on itself so the sheeting is doubled. Tear off a length of parchment paper and fold it in half lengthwise. Place the plastic inside the fold of the parchment paper. It will keep your plastic from melting to the iron or anything else. Lay the towel down flat underneath the parchment and plastic layers to protect the floor. Heat the iron up to the second highest setting. Gently iron over the parchment paper so the plastic melts together underneath. Iron about 4 inches up from the edge so there's an ample seam. Let the paper cool for about 30 seconds before unfolding and removing from the plastic. Then move the parchment paper down to the next section of plastic and iron. Continue around all of the open seams, except for one of the corners. One of the corners will need to remain open for filling and emptying. Iron up to the corner so that an open channel is left between the two plastic layers. I highly recommend not using anything less than 6 mm thick sheeting. I tried out the 4 mm thick stuff, but it just wasn't strong enough. I wanted kids, dogs, and fully grown adults to be able to lounge and play on it. Cut off the top of the bottle so only the screw top and lid remain. The water blob is ready to fill. Place the blob where you plan on using it as it will be way too heavy to move once it's filled. Insert the end of a hose and start filling. When the water blob seems to be about 85 to 90% full, stop filling. You'll want some give in the blob for body weight, so you don't want to fill it completely. Pull the plastic of the open corner up through the screw top, then fold back over the threads. Screw the cap onto the bottle threads. It'll be a little more difficult with the added plastic sheeting layer but get a few threads secured in the cap and it will keep the blob from leaking. Bailey's idea of a well-spent summer afternoon is lying on the water blob filled with cool water. 
It's water play without the wet dog smell. Water blobs provide splashy summer fun for little ones, adults, and pets. And getting wet is optional. Thanks for watching Home Talk. Bailey and I will see you next time. Terracotta is a porous material, which means that water seeps through it slowly. I don't want that. I have um, a triple thick clear glaze protectant, and I'm going to give the pieces I'm using a couple coats of that. While the glaze is drying, I'm going to spray the back sides of both of these terracotta pots with some spray paint. I have a light gray color. The glaze is dry on the terracotta dish, and I'm going to use the same spray paint I did the pots and give this a quick coat on both sides. The paint is dry and now I'm gonna glue the pots together. I'm using a, a strong glue that is good for marine use, so it's watertight. I'm gonna put these aside so the glue can dry. And we're gonna work on the next part. And I'm gonna take my tile adhesive and I'm gonna start in small sections. I'm gonna put some adhesive down. And I'm gonna start placing some beach glass or sea glass. I've called it beach glass since I was little. And I'm gonna try to fill up all the space. let this dry overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and finish it up. So the tile adhesive's all set and dried and now we're gonna grout our project. While I'm waiting for the grout to dry and what's gonna be the top of my bird bath, I grab the base and I'm gonna add a little color detail to the gray. And the technique I'm gonna use is called dry brushing. Dry brushing is you take a, I usually use one of these little chip brushes and lightly dip the ends of the bristles into it. And then I kind of just dab off most of the paint and then just kind of lightly brush it on whatever project I'm working on. And I think this will be dry by the time the grout's dry and then we can put it all together and bring it outside to the garden. Everything's dry. I had cleared off the excess grout and this is what the dish looks like. Isn't that so pretty? I'm finishing it off. I'm going to use the same clear glaze I sealed the pots with and put a coat on everything and make it have a nice little sheen.